Hi guys, Jake and Marissa back again for more live reactions to Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. Vogue. I have green. Yep, yep. I'm gonna pinch you anyway. Pinch. Ah! That's what you get for pinching me when I'm wearing green. Ah! You get pinched. Happy Saint, Happy Saint Patrick's Day. Not my I school. apologize for that Sorry. accent. That was that was off. Um. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we're not doing anything for St. Patrick's Day. I we I I literally put this green shirt on like right before we started recording. I just happen to have green pajama bottoms on, and I'm not feeling well, so I didn't put on regular clothes. Cause hey, I'm I'm wearing the Power Rangers T-shirt anyway. Yeah, that works. Which I, uh. Honestly, neither of us are feeling that well today. That was um, your first anniversary gift to me when we were dating. That's true. His, his Power Rangers t-shirt. I guess at that point he knew we were yeah. going to be together for, for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why risk giving me his, his yeah. very favorite t-shirt? Yeah. It's good times. Um, so, yeah. We are we are at mid season finale time. I know that this has flown right by, um, and it's re it's really flown by in that. Yeah. I, I can't believe it's we're halfway through March now in twenty eighteen, um, which makes me feel extra bad that I still haven't been able to get eighty four out. But maybe now that we don't have to worry about a second round of live reactions, um, I'm I'm gonna try and see if maybe. Maybe yeah, next. I get my Saturdays off for a while. So well, sort of. Still do live reactions on Tuesdays. What we'll, do you mean, sort of? We'll probably still do some some other filming now that we're not doing this filming. Um. We've got. I I do want to focus more on DRPR now that um, Super Ninja Steel is going on hiatus. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Although you tend to do that on wacky days, so it might not be Saturday. Yeah, um, and actually this. Uh, this next week, uh, my evenings are going to be available for once, uh, because my, uh, my private school students are going to be on spring break for the next two weeks. Oh! So my schedule is going to be very different for the next two weeks. Yeah. I, I don't have any, like, like, um, like, for at least four days a week, I'm out in the evenings for tutoring. Um. Yeah, he goes to a private school, a different one than he taught at. Yeah. Um, but since they're going to be gone for the next two weeks, I'm going to be here in the evenings instead. He's not uh, on so the I'm school's payroll. So I'm hoping to dedicate that to, uh, editing and things. But you started tutoring, like, one kid there, and then word yeah. mouth spread. And well, it's, it's, like, well, they have, a, they have, um, a, they, they have, like, a coordinator. Yeah. Who, who puts, who puts people in touch with people. Uh, yeah, I started off with just one, but that's, that's, you know, that just happened to be the first one. Yeah, was if I recall correctly, you tutor. did very well with her. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's and been... that's why you got more clients. Because... Also, they also just uh, usually parents don't start looking for tutors until until uh, looking for tutors until like halfway through the first semester when they realize what their students need tutoring with. Yeah, so everything sort of ramped up. The math sciences are always real great for that. Yeah, exactly. Everything sort of ramped up, you know, uh, past that halfway point. Uh, where I went from like one to four, um, and right now I have five, which is which is pretty much my max in terms of what I can actually make. Right, because you see them schedule. twice a week. Yeah, and and I you have to still work have around time. actual school, and then his actual school. Yeah, I still I still want to make sure you know to have time for. And your hours down at the tutoring center. Yeah, I do some hours down at the local tutoring center. I I want to make sure I have time for editing, and I really need to make sure that I have time to get my schoolwork done. Uh, which I'm doing pr looking pretty good for this week, at least. Uh, I don't have the crazy amount of reading that I had last time, so that's, that's shaping up pretty well. Slight upset tummy, so I do apologize for eating during this, but i got to do something to keep it. Yeah. Um, good old Bucky. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully this will be a good opportunity to get back to work on DRPR. Uh, especially 84. We we just did some filming for 85 last week. We're doing mm -hmm. some more filming for 85 next week. Um, and, uh, yeah, things are going to start getting crazy pretty fast again. I know 83 was already pretty crazy. Uh, the plot's going to start getting 
getting extra crazy extra soon. So I do need to dive into that. Yeah. And and uh, and start writing uh, for the episodes of uh, year three that I haven't written yet because we're we're coming up on. Uh, yeah. What's the uh, latest one you've written? I was I was working on eighty eight. I need to continue. I haven't I haven't written a script in a while because we've just had those that nice backlog to work off of, and I've yeah. just been moving so slow on editing. So, but I have someone who might be willing to to help out locally on editing, which is going to make things uh, which can make things easier. Um, so I'm going to try tr uh, training her on that. Uh, simply, be I do have an assistant editor who helps out with clips, but uh, because it's you know, sending files back and forth, and the files are so large, I, I'm limited on how much footage they can work with. Exactly, because... Uh, but someone locally, locally, we can just be like, here's a drive. Thank you for the drive. So I'm going to try for that and see how that works. So fingers crossed that goes well. But anyway... Um, yeah. Uh, enough of that. Let's see what's actually going to be happening here with this mid-season finale. Let's see where they, where they leave us off on episode 8 of Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel Caught Red Handed. That's done. I know the episode title this time. He did not sacrifice himself. He. Well, I mean, he sort of did, but he. I feel like you're missing a point on that there. You really had no idea he was going to, you know. Yeah. Uh, like he's even in that clip after having back, having come back. But. Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel. But the thing is, anyone who didn't see, like, the... What the what? A whistle in the regular classroom? Today is the Summer Cove High Annual Camping Trip. It's okay. my favorite outing. The smell of pine trees and campfires. Sure. Camping trip, that sounds fun. What? To find our camp, you're going to need to use a compass. I will okay. be using this antique compass. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's... that's it belonged to my grandmother. That, my grandpa what? used to have a compass just like that. I love playing with it. Oh, well, today we're not playing. Today, these are vital tools we need to... This is Victor. Victor, Victor is trying to be Indiana Jones. Mm. It's obviously Victor. And speaking of safety... What? What? The dreaded summer cove rut. Of course, Monty's a boy scout. That's adorable. What? Why do you need to describe a horn like a banana? I think everyone knows what a rhino horn looks like. Monty made this cool snare blaster to do the job. Capturing that rhino will make Victor more popular than even the Power Rangers. Why, why do you have a Gatling net cannon? You are not good with this. Also, seriously, telling the entire class this is going to make him more popular than the Power Rangers is a great way to not make him more popular. It's like, I've got a plan to become popular. Well, now that you've told everyone about it. Okay. At least he's being up front. Thank you, random helpful teenager. Do you like it? I'm very confused as to why they're preparing for this school camping trip with the principal in the science room. I don't know. Because I don't know about you, but every time I went on trips with my school, we would meet out in front of the school and get on a bus. Oh, the grandfather's compass is gone. Who moved it? Antique compasses are quite valuable. What are you doing, Monty? No, that's Why ridiculous. Are you being... I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Why are you being all sketchy? <gasps> there it is. In that bag. Okay. What is this? It's fine. It clearly just got knocked off the table. How did this get into your pack, Brody? Uh, there it's was a... Frank. There was a net cannon. It said things flying places. I'm gonna go with the net cannon sent things flying places. Hello, oh, might together ninja steel. Never give up without a fight together ninja steel. Power Rangers fear no danger. Go, go, Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. Go, standing up for what is right together. 
Stay in the ball day and night together, ninja steel. Stay in the ball day and night together, ninja steel. Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, ninja steel! Go, go, Power Rangers! Ninja steel! Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, Ninja Steel! And it doesn't help that he was just talking about how much he loved to play with his grandfather's compass. It's fine. It's cheap. It's, like, wide open. I think Victor and Monty did it on purpose. I don't know why. He said he liked playing with his grandpa's compass. Why are you being all sketchy, guys? You just couldn't help yourself, could you? Also... Seriously? You think I took it? Brody wouldn't do that. Oh, he had money. Why? And while everyone was cleaning up, he oh. had an opportunity. Do you, you have a camera? Appear in your bag, did it? Well, um. I'm going to make this really simple. Okay. Either you tell the truth, or you're not going on the camping trip. Okay, tell the truth. He didn't put Sorry, ma'am, but I'm not going to admit to something I didn't do. There you go. Well, that's very disappointing, Brody. I thought highly of you, but obviously I was wrong. Okay. Everyone but Brody, you are being unfair at the moment. Um. Okay. Did she just say everyone but Brody, Victor, and Monty? In the hallway, so don't even think about going through that door. I, are they well, stuck? Well, you know you didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I everything was flying you. around. I always brought some magic tricks. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I guess, yeah, Brody. Uh, yeah, Victor and Monty, I guess, were staying. Yeah, we're all so excited for camping, so yeah, just go and have fun. I'll be fine. They got trouble for their camping. Okay, Brody. Yeah, which is fair. It's not going to be the same. See you tomorrow. Here's the thing. Strange. They've got bed rolls. Yeah. So they're clearly planning on camping overnight. I guess so. But they're going to get to their campsite using compasses. Yeah. Which means that it has to be within walking distance of the school. Probably. That's a really weird camping trip. Hey, there's the rhino. That's right. Wait. Fully charged. What? What? That's an inflatable dice. Why? What? Why is it? Why is it inflatable? That looks like something that somebody just literally picked up at a dollar store. What are they? Of course. Have you guys not learned about crawling from the ceiling before already? They'll be fine just so long as there's no. There's so long as there's no fishing line attached to somebody's wing. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just scratching my back. Which we would never dream of doing. Huh? Smell you later. See? Okay, get your test set. You know that spot in your back that you can't reach? Yeah. I don't have one. Fair enough. Good job, Sarah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good as well. Um, I always do that so quickly. It's because I have really long limbs relative to my torso. Gosh, I have pretty good Yes, you do. You're very gangly. What's up, Mickey? There's bus camps in the forest near your campsite. That's not good. We'll check it out. Yeah. Where do we find it? It's that one little glowy part. What's he gonna do? The dumb. Uh, I guess so. That inflatable that dice. dice. That looks very silly. Yep. Now, what attack is my dice chosen? Four, three. Number three. Looks like it's time to let off this. steam with my ninja kettle. And he says he's going to do this. What? A nin ninja kettle? Okay, here's the thing. He says he's doing this so that the name Rangers can't predict which attack is going to be. And then he says where it's going to be. Well, also, he's rolling the dice in front of them. Yep. Which means that over time, they're going to figure out what three, four, one, what they mean. Yeah, which means they're actually always going to have more information than he wants them to. It's, it's pretty nonsense. It's, it's a pretty nonsense giving. Yeah, so eventually... 
Game of Farts. Okay. Okay. I don't watch I don't watch too many other Nick shows. Um, but it does look, I guess, like uh, like Power Rangers has been trying to imitate the other Nick shows in that respect. If this is a thing that happens regularly, or or maybe maybe Power Rangers is being the trendsetter. Yeah, they I don't did know. Farts before these guys, before I saw this commercial, we That's do true. see commercials for this regularly. Well, it's a new show. It started this season. But still, it's just... no. I've seen commercials from the show before. I've never seen one that included Game of Farts. Yeah. We yeah. need to see this. We need to see this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wrinkle and time. Looks very We saw Black Panther. It was great. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was great. 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 Yeah. Great. It was very good. Okay, Nana. Um. But yeah. Uh, and I love Shuri. Yeah. I was. I was not remotely surprised by that. Everybody loves Shuri. I love Shuri. Um. But yeah, I, I liked a lot of the things they did with Black Panther, especially um, some of the, the... The way they used the villain to... Uh, the villain's motivation to tie directly into the hero's character arc, I thought was very good. And it's something... It's a, it's a very good use of villain that you don't get to see too often, and it, uh, it lent to the sympathetic nature of the villain as well. Without actually, you know, Without excusing his actions. Yeah, because a lot of the times the sympathetic villain is a cop-out, but he wasn't a cop-out. He was really good. Um, and speaking of villains, Andy Serkis has far too much fun showing his actual face on camera. Yeah, yeah. Michael, do you solemnly swear to explore this world? Actually, one thing, one sneaky joke that they had in there with him. Do you want to spoil that? It's, it's a one-off line. Uh, he makes a joke, at one point he makes a joke about SoundCloud. And, although, it's something where, it, it, in the context of the, of the movie, it doesn't mean anything. What did I tell you his comic book counterpart was? Which is something I discovered. His counterpart, his comic book counterpart, is a being of pure sound, a literal sound cloud. ABC Mouse, from A to Infinity. Which I think is kind of cute. That was such an in joke I wouldn't have noticed. Exactly. It flies right by. Looks like it. Danger. And is this guy his only hope? What are you doing to your underwear, dude? I'm stinging them. But what? Get their ankles out. Find out when they go back to the danger. Thomas Part 1 of the two-part Harry Danger special. Next time you're Or she or they. Not sure the gender reference. I'm not sure either. I, I think it's a guy. Who's they, you say? They, he'd be used boots. Because they're underwear. Let's try to hang it. Whoosh! Somehow they had a lot more running to do than that shot indicated. So did you not see this? Were you just hiding behind that tree the whole time? What? The rangers are trying to steal our thunder. What? No. The rangers don't even know about you as far as you know, because you don't know that the rangers are your classmates. Also, were you guys just standing behind that tree that whole time, not listening to anything until you turned around and then you saw the power and you're fighting the rhino monster? You can't defeat me! Huh? 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 They they work off so much cartoon business. Here comes their bulk and skull imitation thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really people have been commenting on that lately, and yeah, it is very much a bulk and skull rip off thing. What? Team Rocket's blasting off again! Oh, okay, sure, why not? Yeah, they totally are dead. Victor, Monty, what are you doing out of 
This is not how you camp. Maybe this is how you camp in elementary school. I don't know. But in high school, what? you're gonna camp. Jax. Go camp. Explosive. Okay. Yes, clearly. Go. Sherlock. I self-censored. Yes, this is this is ridiculous. This is an absurd gimmick. Seriously, you get the. Whoa, he's got the special little, uh, that, that's cool, he got the, uh, invisibility curtain thing that the other guy did. What? Sure, why not? Okay. Um, seriously, like, high schoolers, take a bus, you need to, drive You need to get out of there, you need to get out of there, bro. Take him into the actual forest, not someplace you could walk to from your school. Is you could stay here and camp with us? No! Only if I say I lied about the compass, but... I didn't do it. My integrity is worth more than any camping trip. Okay, sure. Yeah. I'm actually that's, with That's legit. I'm good to go. I like integrity. Integrity is good. Integrity is a good thing to stick with. You were trying to keep everyone safe from the rhino. Safe? Safe? I just flew out of the sky and killed my tent. That's not safe. Make believe. Wait. We have proof. I got the entire thing on video. You know what else you got on video? Brody not stealing things. Well, we need to go back to the school immediately. Come with me. Oh, she knows now that Brody didn't do it. Yeah, that's legit. Brody, there's something I need to show you. Yep. Sure. What is it? This is the video that Monty okay. shot. How to demonstrate a bat skeleton. Sure. I'm not sure. You really caught my good side, Monty. They're all good sides, Victor. <laughs> that's normal. Yeah. There we go. So. Yeah. Much closer. Yeah, the net flamed it. Let me just zoom in here. What? No, you. What? Okay. Your compass. The net knocked it into my bag. Yeah. You're not a liar. Yeah. In fact, you're the opposite. You could have just told me what I wanted to hear and gone camping with your friends, but instead, yep. you stuck to the truth. Yep. I'm sorry, Brody. I was wrong. It took courage to do the right thing. They resolved this oddly quickly, but okay, sure. I want Good. you to have this. Aww. Every act of bravery deserves a reward. What? No, he doesn't get really? to keep that. Please. Maybe use it today. But Thanks. That's a little, that's a little money. Does this mean I can go camping? Of course. Oh, that was That's adorable. Guys, hear you're never gonna guess what just happened. Wait, what about us? Can we go camping? Oh. Did you see the rhino in the video? Uh, the video ends after the classroom disaster. You're both back in detention. Here's the funny thing. Uh, that was basically hey. that camera that he has is is basically identical to the camera that we're using right now. Yes, I know, Monty. And it it can't do that. It can't do that. But you know what could do that? What? Old oh, camcorders. Do the zooming? Oh no, not the zooming. The projector to the TV. Yeah. I feel like we. Okay. I feel like. Hello and welcome to see the family face. We we resolve the central conflict of this episode. No. John Cena, what are you? The correct answer. He seems to think John he's uh, uh what's totally like the biggest honor you could ever get. I don't what is know. what is that guy who plays Medea? Right. Tyler Perry? He, he seems to think he's Tyler Perry. I think he's just become a, a living meme at this point. I think he's just embraced his embraced his status as a living meme. Like there's more John Cena right there. Oh my goodness, yo yo balls back? Around, Did it ever really leave? And you never have to worry, you can do it all, everybody. It's a yo yo ball is changing. Okay. I know you're trying to do like a remix of the original like 90s theme thing for Yo Yo Ball, but honestly, I think you just made it sound more yeah, more 90s. Yeah, because it kind of sounds a little it's like it's a yo yo ball. Like, it sounds a bit like kid and play. It sounds like, yo, yo, I'm totally a rapper from the 90s, yo, yo, yo. 
I wonder how many of these no movies are going to end up. I don't know. They did Romeo and Juliet. And now it's Sherlock No. And, and, and now it's just a question of what other classic stories can they come up with uh, to do no puns with. I think it's how this is going to roll. Tetris Cheerios. Because, why not? Mario Cheerios. Because it was like a Minecraft Cheerios. Right? Yep, there's a Minecraft Cheerios. This is a very old commercial. Um, well, not that old. My, I mean, at least a year and a half old. Salad. Yeah, but there, there are commercials that have been running for like the last 20 years. I know, like that one with the Christmas song, um, ding, 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 Hershey Kisses. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. That Hershey Kisses commercial has been around for something like 18, 19 years. Yeah. Mix it up with Lunchables. But yeah, I feel like, um, the structure of Ninja Steel is a little odd in that they seem to be very much following off the Power Rangers moral, the, the Mighty Morphin moral of the day pattern, but the moral of the day seems to keep getting learned halfway through the episode, which is strange. It's not so much acting as a parallel plot, but as a, you know, sort of uh, slightly overlapping plot during the first half of the episode. Sorry, that was an old grandma. I think people's sticks. I was really confused. Yeah. No. We're watching. An old grandma as opposed to a young grandma, which is what happens when everybody has kids in their teenage years. Yeah. Then you wind up with like a 35 year old grandma. It's like, I am not ready to be a grandma. Yeah. That one's pretty bad. Oh, okay, that's apparently another ability of yours that we haven't really addressed for sure. You do have a leathery hide. You are a rhinoceros. Well, that's a good footage match. This uh, Japanese location is very similar to the woods they were actually in in Milan. Yeah, as long as they don't turn back the other way because they have a beach and so, the Japanese footage does not. Japanese. Okay, so that dice is actually from the Sentai. Number five. My freeze hammer will stop what? 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 He can literally just walked up to him and went bonk, and the Blue Ranger did nothing to what? stop him. It's a squeaky hammer! He has a squeaky hammer! I'm so confused by this guy. He's just... He has a kettle and a squeaky hammer. He has the... Such a weirdly goofy gimmick. And it's not even like it's... It's not even like the gimmick itself is that weird. It's like, oh, I roll a dice and that chooses my... My, uh, my attack, but... Squeaky hammer! It's an inflatable dice and a squeaky hammer and, like, a kettle and jacks... Like, this guy is, like, five years old. I don't know what his deal is. Toy box? I guess. I, mean, I don't know what that has to do with being a ninja, but sure. Nothing. But it may not have had anything to do with being ninjas in the other thing, either. Hmm. Um, in, in well, I, I don't Yeah, they may not have been ninjas. They, they, de they definitely have a com common... A common the theme, but the theme may not have been ninjas. Um, I mean, I don't know. Hi. But the dude definitely has something going on with, like, classic kids' toys here. Yeah. yeah dice, squeaky hammer. Yep. I'm not sure how a kettle fits into that. Oh, going to, straight to the ultra door. Cool. That's funny. Do Japanese kids play with fake kettles? I don't know. I mean, it's a tea party. I was going to say, they like tea. Sure, why not? Tea party. Tea party. 
we use key pops for that, but uh. <laughs> that 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 inflatable die though. It's just like so ridiculous. Or you know I have to admit, I think I'm one of the only people who actually likes the colored uh, the color decorations on the on the visors in the Super Ninja Steel mode. Oh, I don't like dice with the one with the pip. Mm. I'm a dice player. But like, I like the I like the yellow thing with the teeth he's got going on. I like I like the little colored uh, decorations on the visors. That's really. Yeah, I think that, I think they're pretty. I don't see one on that. Well, that's because oh, he's, 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 he's not in Super Ninja Steel mode. Yeah, he's in live mode. Yeah. Whoosh. Yeah. Oh no. He flew he threw the die in the air. Is something going to happen with it? Is it going to land? It's a flood anyway. Yeah. Yes. Three galactic ninjas have been destroyed. That is by the really Rangers. coincidental. And now I what? have each of them. Does she happen to be where it landed? I I assume she went to where it was going. What? Okay. Interesting. She's just jumping straight into this. Oh. What? What's happening? Yes, yes, yes. Whoa. No, no, no. What? Foxatron. Okay, sure, why not? I was really hoping for Psycho Rangers. Okay. Uh, she made her own Zord. Okay, so they're just jumping. They're jumping into this a little, a little faster than I anticipated. I figured that we, we were going to have at least one more episode with the fourth one, but then she's just like, no, nah, there's only one of you. I'm just going to take it now because there's only one of you. Monsters don't have swords. I hate to break it to you, but they don't have monsters because they don't have swords. Huh. Cool. Madame Odious has a has a sword full of gears and things. Sure. Give her Zord a squeaky hammer. I I I want I want the Zord to have a squeaky hammer now. Yeah, the Ultra Sword is pretty powerful. It is an Ultra Sword. But uh, apparently, this, those, those four. Uh, I'm, su I'm surprised that the, uh, that the B one is. is or the Wasp one, or Bug one, whatever. It's, it's fine. Uh oh. That's not great. That's not great. A lot of people feel that it makes it a little too busy or makes the uh, the visors too small, but honestly, I feel like it focuses the visors more around having the eye section be clear. Yeah. It gives it a little bit more character. It makes it almost like more in face. Also, like, it's not as if they have any less eye space than, say, Go Busters. Yeah. Well, this is not going well for them. It's maybe one of those uh, mid-season finales where they're defeated. It looks like something. It looks like we, we are we are getting uh, some actual uh, suspense and whatnot for our for mid-season finale. We are our cliffhanger. How do they come back from this? We haven't had one of those before. Yeah. What? 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 Their stars got burnt out. Really? Why are you trying to do that with your sword instead of your mouth? My sword, sorry, it isn't working. When the Megazord was blasted apart. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's their Zord stars. That's right, not their power stars. Okay. Okay, so their Zord stars got got fried. That's that's bad. Yes. 
The shorts are actually getting taken out. Like mice in this form. Yeah, just a little bit. Wow. Uh, Foxatron uh, just owned hard. I was not really expecting all this. You know, I'm actually okay now with Brody's plot being wrapped up so quick. Quickly, now that we're, it means we're actually get to focus on our actual season plot. We get to have some season plot. To be continued. Not now. Why is my fox a losing power? That's a good question. What happened? Why would it stop? Look, Odysseus is coming out. Robot. Uh, maybe you should morph. Morphing might be a good idea. Hi. Hi. What? How can this be? The Foxatron nearly destroyed the Rangers, but those medallions ran out of power. Venema, my you medallions don't powered up and ready. Yeah. Wait, madam, you just need to recharge them. And just how long will that take? By this time tomorrow, you'll have enough energy to obliterate we, the Rangers. We've got a trio of female villains right now. <laughs> Cool. They took out all of the male Galactic Ninjas, and now we have a trio of female villains. To be continued! I told you! Well, yeah, I, I kind of could see that was where Make it was going. Make it stop! Make it stop! I could see that was where it was going, but was I wasn't expecting ball. it to actually show it to be continued at the end, because, like... I did, that's why I said it. Oh, fair enough. I said to be continued. <laughs> well, cliffhangers are, are, are one... Th well, it's nice to have a cliffhanger that, and it's actually to be continued. It's being treated as as an actual arc. We're having an actual. Uh, we're we're in in an arc now. It's happening, uh, which we have not really gotten much of. No. Um, they actually ended their mid season finale on a legit cliffhanger, which <laughs> we have not had in quite some time. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of the last time. All right, so looking back at our past mid-season finales through Neo Saban that we've had so far. Um, all right, so last time we introduced our, we introduced our Gold Ranger. Time before that, um, it was a filler episode with Ivan. Time before that, uh, we had sort of a cliffhanger-ish. The, the episode itself was largely resolved, but we had the mystery of what was going on with Fury. Mm. Time before that was introduction of Orion. Time before that was the episode after the introduction of Robo Knight, which just introduced his Megazord. Uh, prior to that, we had a semi cliffhanger in that um, Xandrid rose for the first time and then uh, was temporarily defeated, but it wasn't a cliffhanger of this level. No, not like this. Um, like, it didn't introduce new mist. It, it created a villain, a shift in the villain power dynamics, which was interesting. Um, just, so, that, that, and then prior to that, um, we had, uh, in Samurai, what was the mid, the mid-season finale there was, uh, I guess, what's up? Oh, what, the cat's napping? They're being very cute. <laughs> you want to take a nap, too. Um, we wrapped up with the black box business, um, which wasn't exactly a cliffhanger, just kind of uh, left the black box as aspect unresolved. But this time, we actually ended on a to-be-continued oh, yeah. cliffhanger. I remember that black box. That made no sense at all. They didn't even address it until, like, three episodes after they came back. Yeah, yeah, it was very silly. Um, yeah. well, really, it was, they came back for, like, a few, ep for, like, really, like, two episodes. And then they did the two episodes at the beginning of the season that they had skipped. Um, and then we, uh, we got the resolution of the black box 
at the beginning of the following season. So that was something that just was left unresolved throughout all the fall episodes, too. Yeah. Uh, which was very silly. Um, but, yeah, no, this, uh, this episode was actually fairly solid. Uh, there was definitely some goofiness uh, with the whole uh, monster gimmick, but now I see that was clearly a Sentai thing. I don't get the concept of a high school camping trip if that's, close, that's that close to the school. Uh, um, you get crammed onto a bus and driven in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's how you do camping. But, I don't know, I guess, uh, I guess they have campgrounds near enough that it works. I'll roll with it. They, they clearly are very close to a heavily wooded area. They're fighting out there all the time. Fair. Um, and there's even an outdoorsman club that we've seen once, with Sarah being the one person able to actually put together her tent. So that kind of builds off that. So the, and they got to reuse those tent props from that one episode. Um, so that worked. Um, and, yeah, the whole little Brody thing was... Um, Integrity! Good! Yeah, actually, I didn't really have... Uh, I was actually a solid ASAP. Yeah. ASAP. It's, it's basically, look, sometimes it can be hard to do the right thing. But it's still the right thing. But it's still the right thing, and eventually, sticking to your guns and doing the right thing will lead to the right uh, rewards. Which isn't actually always the case. It, it isn't, but it's basically... Uh, but that, that's an it's unfortunate... something to strive for. Exactly. It's not exactly something that is always realistic, but... The point but is, is that even if he had to stay back from the school trip, he was willing to take that. Yeah. Uh, it was a very in this case, it was a very good redeemed, lesson in personal but responsibility. It was good personal responsibility. Um, the whole thing with him being you know, speaking of personal responsibility, the other thing we saw modeled here yeah. that kids should be taught about and mm -hmm. often aren't is the principal's reaction upon finding out she was wrong. Yeah, she said I was wrong, yep. and she said I'm sorry. Yep, to their high school students, but essentially yeah. the adult. <laughs> apologized to the child for making a mistake. Yeah. And that needs to happen more often. Yeah. Because... Especially in this current environment where, where a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of kids out there who are, you know, sort of standing up for what they believe is right in the face of very difficult circumstances. Very difficult circumstances. Um, um, although I don't think those teenagers are watching this show. Well, fair. Uh, but some of the 12-year-olds who, who are occasionally marching my... They're getting in on that as well. Um, uh, but it sets that good... It is, I like it when the show sets a good example for behavior that students should strive for. Tell the truth. Do the right thing. Take your lumps if you have to. But do the right thing. It's the Matilda lesson. Yeah. Um, so I, I was down... I'm down for that. Yeah, it was a contrived situation... It was a little. It was a little weak. Simply, it was a little weakly. Re CG simply resolved. Was a little weird because it looked. It just kind of did a little whip thing, but you know what? I'll roll with it. I'll roll with that. And it seemed like the really obvious thing that happened. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, I called that at the beginning of the episode. I was like, "Monty has a camera." Yeah. Yeah. Monty had a camera. Like everything. It very much. It was Chekhov's camera. Yeah. Well done. It. It actually, that whole storyline played like it was, that was part of like a, um, it felt like a, like an 11 minute story, you know, for one of those kinds of, for, for a typical kid show that is split up into two halves. I was going to say, it almost felt a little Clarissa Explains It All. <laughs> the high school drama without the, the Power Rangers part Fair of enough. it, where, of course, you know, if you yeah, recall from that... Yeah, and I haven't watched that in a very long time. The adults time, so. were always a little bit... Eh. Yeah. And the teenagers were the competent ones. Um, but yeah, it was, it, there was definitely, it was definitely, you know, goofy, a little contrived, but it, it was well-intentioned, and, you know, it, it came... And it turned and out it, right in the end. It turned out right in the end, so I, I actually feel okay about that one. Um... And, uh, and I do like that we're actually pushing the story forward, uh, actually having something of a story, um, showing 
You know, these days Sam would never get away with that business with the window. Yeah, true. Um, but we we are finally showing Madame Odious. Uh, she is taking charge. She's differentiating herself as a villain from Galvanax. She's finally being yeah. proactive, planning in the long term. Uh, we weren't seeing much of that during her first couple outings, but we're starting to see that well, now. It, uh, looking backwards, she was laying the framework for this. Well, yeah, this framework has been laid out since um, over the last few episodes. So, yeah, um, even though it's, it's, it's just her first few episodes, we did. We, yeah. She was dropping the ball. Like, let's face it, the whole, um, she did not make a strong first outing with giving the Rangers Just back their back powers. powers. Yeah. That, that hurt her as a villain right she there. She should not have fixed that thing there. She should have taken it upstairs and fixed it on the and, ship. And then her next few episodes were just sort of wacky monster plots where we had, uh, the monster that was powered by lying, which, let's face it, that... That's it's it's a it's a very goofy kind of Power Rangers plot, but it doesn't really do anything for her as a villainess. It's just that was what the monster's ability was. Um, she did get a little bit more proactive with uh, Spyclops disguising her, uh, herself as as uh, Levi's love and interest, making him sing the evil song of evil. Um, you know, it it was again still a little a little weak, but at least. She's pushing for something a little bit more, uh, involving a little Apparently, bit more subterfuge. Apparently, this falls into the sports genre. What? That's silly. Children, action, miscellaneous, miscellaneous sports. sports. Oh, it's not just miscellaneous sports, it's miscellaneous sports. There's not a combo between there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what makes this miscellaneous sports. I guess because it's, because it's martial arts-ish. Martial arts. Um, but anyway... And then, uh, she at least has been trying to do things that aren't just sending down the monster. She's been trying to do other things. Sometimes those things don't make any sense, like why she felt like a tsunami was a relevant idea, but okay. It would have been nice if she had And she hired a really incompetent tsunami guy who made a machine that could be basically it, turned off at the staff. It would have been nice if she had addressed why she was doing the tsunami. It's like, oh, and then... We'll be able to get the ninja stars from the drowned rangers? I don't know if she was just trying to drown them. That was not really very well specified why she was doing that. Can you even drown in a ranger suit? I mean, you can go in space I, in a ranger suit. I mean, they needed the subsurfer, they needed the drone to get at the thing, so I guess they they can. They're ba they go back and forth, I think, on what rangers can I mean, Tiny do. was in the suit forever. Yeah, I know. Um, but, uh, was he eating and peeing? Yeah, you got it. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway. So, that was funny. And then we had the video game thing, which, again, at least it was, uh, again, a little more on the... It was targeted at the Rangers, at least. It was tar It was targeted. It was also, uh, she's been employing more strategy overall yeah. than Galvanax did, which is, which is the important distinction between them. Uh, yeah, he was brute force. She's cunning. Her, her strategies have not always made sense, but at least she's using strategies, which he didn't bother with. He just wanted other people to come up with ideas and be like, yeah, sure, go do that. Go do that. Um, but, uh, and then by the end of the uh, video game episode was when she was calling in the Galactic Ninjas. Um, I don't know what gave her that. I, I don't know what gave her that idea. I don't know, you know, why it... I don't know. Maybe she saw a commercial. Yeah, there wasn't really an inciting instance. We're still not really sure about how this world works. Yeah. We're they have some sort of monster news network that's showing Galaxy Warriors. She could have been watching the monster soaps and seen a Maybe. hire the Galaxy Ninjas. Maybe. Maybe they're ambulance this, chasers. This show, and I, I, I've, I've commented on this before. Maybe it was on during, what's that show Poissandra watches? Oh, oh, um, Glitz, Glitz, Glitz World? Glitz I think World. It's, I think it's, I want to say Glitz World. Um, but... This show has not been great about um, having strong incite, uh, inciting incidents for a lot of things. It's just, we're doing this because we came up with this idea now, <laughs> as opposed to anything gave us this well, idea. Well, I mean, 
all the way back to the classics. I mean, Rita had a tendency to do that sometimes. True, true. It was uh, either, where did you come up with this idea, or I'm gonna mess up the Rangers chess club. Yeah, it was just whatever the Rangers happened to be doing inspired whatever her actions which would be. Uh, which, which obviously, is really uh, petty. It's really petty, but I was always down for that. It's it's something that I The Rangers are trying to play soccer. Well what I what I like about how Rita handled I'm things such a soccer monster. Uh with all that is that um Well one is that she was constantly just throwing ideas out there, just anything that could hit the wall. She you know, she just had a million different ideas. Well, they had a lot of episodes for her to play around in. So I, I was always down for that. But the other thing is that when she was being inspired, when she was using the Rangers as inspiration, it played into a psychological warfare aspect, and that made Rita interesting as a villain to me. That really, I just took it as Rita being a petty, petty which is, woman, which you know, who really just wanted to sc screw, screw with, with the Rangers. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was a swear. Yeah, so no, I almost I'll, I'll go with that. Who really just wanted to screw with the Rangers almost more than she wanted to defeat them. And you know what? That's the type of villain that I'm also down for. It's just like, you know what? Yeah, being petty is a villainous trait. I'm down for her just being really... Yes, she wants to take over the world, she but she also... She wants to the Rangers' day. She also wants to ruin her enemies, because you know what? These kids have been really annoying her, and it's become but personal the for thing. her. You wreck their soccer tournament or their chess game, you're not going to ruin their lives. She just wants to be a persistent minor inconvenience. And you know what? You take what you can get. If you can't beat them, make it really inconvenient for them, at least <laughs> in their daily lives. Be a nuisance. That's what Rita is. Rita's a nuisance. She was She was kind of a great nuisance. Um, and it's something that I feel... She's like one of those really petty PTA moms that's out to get another PTA mom. I feel like like a lot of other... We, we've had other incidents over time where we've occasionally had villains behave in that way, mm. but really on a consistent level. Mm. Um, and it's, it's honestly something that I enjoy seeing from the villains. I know it's cheesy, but it's, uh, it adds a level of uh, personality and personal conflict. It's like, okay, you know what? They're the villain is consistently making this personal for the heroes, and I like that. Um... And we don't get to see that too often. Uh, yeah, that's true. And part of that is that they, they aren't, like, being the ranger stalkers like she was. She was just she always was. peering through that through that telescope. I mean, if they had Facebook back then, Rita would have been following them all. Oh, yeah. And you know what? It's also still... With a stalker account, by the way. It, not as Rita Repulsa, because they would just block her that way. Beyond that, it's still a sound strategy that she's constantly monitoring her enemies. Now, true, she should have attacked them... Uh, during their week times, like at home, etc., if she was observing them that much. But, uh, I felt like also, I to mean, an extent, there was a certain code of, like, the, there, there's a certain code of like conflict. A, a Geneva, Geneva Convention, do not attack the rangers while they're sleeping. It's like, you cannot, you, if you want to conquer a planet, you need to defeat its, its heroes first, and that's the way this works. And it has works. to be done in face-to-face -face combat. Yeah. You can't defeat their people by showing up in their bedroom in the middle of the night and stabbing them while they there, sleep. There was an odd sense of honor to to Rita and, and other villains like her. Yes. Um, and and I, I do... It, 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 even though it was, yes, it was contrived, it was a clear code by which everyone operated. Uh, and I like that. Nothing's quite so clear here. Uh, yeah, here things are a little bit more confused a lot of the time. Um, we don't really know... It, we were vague, really, on, you know, what Galvanax's motivations were. Madame Odious doesn't have much clearer motivations. Um, no, they want the ninja steel. They don't even want Earth. Yeah, they don't seem to... They seem to want to conquer the universe, I guess. Uh, I don't know, Earth is just a backwater that they don't care about, aside from They the want ninja the ninja steel. steel. And honestly, if they had been at all diplomatic about the ninja steel, like, honestly, Galvanax and Odious, it, you know, you guys were, were working together ten years ago when it first landed on Earth, just go, hey, um, 
I dropped a giant spinning thing from, I, I'm an alien, this thing fell out of my ship, can I have it back, please? And you can be like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, if it's yours, I guess it's if it's yours, I mean, I th kind of thought that this thing had mystically chosen me, it's like, no, no, this, this it we, fell out of my spaceship, we run a game show, that's our wheel of, like, you know, selecting who gets the like prize. Would you like to see an episode? We, this is how we figure out who gets the prize. Like, if you want, we, we've got a car. We just found it in orbit. Uh, it was a convertible. Um, it's got a CD in there, David Bowie. You'd, you'd love it. You're talking about Elon Musk's car, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> of course, I would play Ninja Steel ten years in the future. But you know what? what? Hey, in ten years, maybe we'll have hoverboards. Why ten years? Because that was the different. Because the prism landed ten years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and the the the, the car went up. Yeah, if you didn't kidnap his kid, wait, wait, he would have no reason to have thought you were a do villain. That as if we don't have enough space debris. Because he figured it would be awesome. That's pretty much the only reason. Um, it was to see if he could. It was also to test to see if he could get something into into Mars's orbit. I think it was as well. And he figured, if I'm going to do something, let me do something awesome. It was just being silly. Um. But yeah, this. I feel like this was uh, a. This was probably one of Ninja Steel's stronger showings. It wasn't a strong showing. It wasn't. At some point, that car is just going to crash back down to Earth. Yeah. No. Yeah, only if it, only if its orbit decays. Well, as far as I can tell, everything we've put up there, its orbit has decayed eventually. It t it takes a long time. I know, um, like sixty years from now. Yeah, maybe. The International Space Station. But the, fell I, out. if I recall correctly, that's going into uh, wait, International Space no, Station the still space. there. Which which one was which space station fell down? I don't remember, but either way, it it's going into Mars orbit, not Earth orbit. It's going way out there. If I recall correctly. Yeah, I thought it was in Earth orbit. Um, anyway, not relevant to the situation. Um, back to this episode, because we only got a few minutes left. Because uh, only so much camera time. Mm. Um, the the key, key thing here, as I was saying, one of their, better, I think probably one of their stronger episodes, plot made, the uh, plot of the episode made sense, it tied into something that's been building up. It gave us a cliffhanger, which we have not had in so long. Skylab. Okay. We've not really had, like, since, I'd say, the Fox Kids days that we've had an actual cliffhanger that says over the course continue. of months. Over, over the course of months. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had episode to episode, but... Like, honestly, I think the last time that we've really had a, you know, multi-month cliffhanger like this... Was Lightspeed Rescue, uh, the Cobra Strikes when we were waiting to see uh, uh, Olympias emerge from his car cocoon, uh, which was a good cliffhanger and, and led into a good uh, mid-season premiere. Um, and you know, th things uh, and then prior to that, um, flashes of Darkonda in space. Darkonda. And before that, we had uh, Honey I Shrunk the Rangers. Um, so yeah, we've got five, five months, probably, so hopefully in August we'll get a good pickup on this and it'll go well, fingers crossed. Time. So, since we're almost out of time on the camera, we'll, we'll miss you guys. We'll see you still we'll see every you week the for the Sentai, Sentai so catch us for the Sentai. But until then, farewell Ranger, Ranger fans and let the power protect you. I messed that up. Joy Gondo!